I'd like to thank you for uh, picking up a copy of the Swing Thing Library for iTunes. We're going to be installing the Search and Play application. This uh, will require that iTunes as well as QuickTime are both installed. Uh, if you have the Swing Thing Library, both are required. And we've included both installers with the library that we sent you. So let's go ahead and do this first. That would be install the search and play application. And then after that's done, we'll come back and we'll show you how to install the Swing Thing library into iTunes. If you're on a Mac or a PC, the procedure's a little different. We'll look at the Mac first because it's so simple. You have to remember that on a Mac, you already have iTunes and you already have QuickTime. That just comes standard on every Mac, so we do not have to install those at all. So what we'll be doing is we'll double click on the DMG that we supplied with your library and we'll drag the search and play application into your applications folder. And that's it. And you're done. Let's give it a shot, see what, what it's like. So here we're on a Mac computer, and I've already plugged in the uh, portable USB flash drive that has the library on board. And uh, here's what we see. We see a README file, uh, which you can look at when you get this, of course. And then the movie that we're watching right now is this Start Here movie. So you can watch that. And then uh, we have a folder with Mac installers and another one with PC installers. And then finally we have the Swing Thing library for iTunes. So the, on a Macintosh, what you would do is you would go into the Mac folder here. And there's a single DMG file which is the installer for search and play. So let's just see what that looks like. I'll just double click it. And it pops up a little window with a little readme file. After you've read that, just click OK. And as soon as the DMG mounts, you'll see a, a little installer window like this. And uh, all you do is grab this little sucker and you drag it into this folder right here, and you're done. Very, very easy. Let's go back here and take a look at the other side. So here we are on the PC, and uh, I've in already uh, inserted the uh, 64 gigabyte USB flash drive that has the library on board. You can see it right here. It's letting us know with that red line that the uh, drive is almost filled up, which is fine. Um, depending on how your uh, PC is configured, you may see a little window pop up like this. And if so, it's just asking you what do you want to do with that external drive. And I'm just going to click on Open Folder to View Files. And so this is everything that's on that drive. Now, just like uh, when we were looking on the Mac end, you've got a folder that has the Mac installer. And you look inside there, you can see that. It's completely useless, of course, uh, for people on a PC, so you can just ignore that. And then in this folder, we've got installers for the PC. Here we've got a QuickTime an iTunes and a search and play installer. And we're going to do all three of these. We're going to do these in the following order. So on a PC, the procedure is as follows. First, we install QuickTime, then iTunes, and then finally we install search and play. Let's give it a shot. Let's go ahead and double click the QuickTime installer.
what it will do is it will connect through the internet to uh, the uh, Apple servers and it'll download all the different components and install them for us. So we'll just go through this uh, installation procedure here. You've probably seen something like this before. We'll just click Next and we'll agree to their user agreement and then click Yes. Now it lets you install a uh, desktop shortcut to QuickTime. Uh, chances are you won't need it because QuickTime is normally called by uh, you launch a file that QuickTime can read and it just automatically launches it so you don't really need to clutter your desktop. You can leave it there if you want. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck it. Click on install and we'll just let it install right into the program folder. Now I'm going to fast forward while this is running here. You'll get a couple of little windows that will pop up just saying, uh, you know, do you want to do this installation? And uh, when those come up, you just tell it to go ahead. Otherwise, we're just going to let this run through real quick here because it does take a little while to download and install. Uh, there's that little window now. So it's just asking if it's OK and you can just say yes. Okay, looks like it just finished up. So we'll just click Finish, and that'll take care of our QuickTime. Now, it does offer to um, sell you the pro version of uh, QuickTime. You don't need that. That's usually just for developers and people like me. So just uh, click No Thanks. And that takes care of our QuickTime installation. The next thing to install is iTunes. So we'll just double click that. There's a, a little bit of a gotcha here with uh, installing iTunes that I discovered uh, here on Windows 7. Uh, I don't know if you'll have the same problem, but uh, I found a simple solution and I'm going to just show you what's involved here. By default, it, it likes to install iTunes into the program directory where all your program files go. What I found, I'm just going to click next here. What I found is that it's better not to install it in the program files area, but instead in your user documents area. So I'm just going to click on change right here. And uh, we'll have to navigate our way to our users directory. So let's just See if we can't find that here. I think that's in users. There's my username. We'll click that. And the documents folder. So I'm going to put that right in here. Now I've already installed search and play on this computer, but it will go through that procedure uh, so you can see how it's done. So I'm just going to go ahead and install iTunes into the same location as I put the search and play app earlier. So we'll just click OK. And finally, we'll just click Install. Click Yes. And I'll just speed this up again. And uh, when it's uh, nearing the end, we'll come back and pick up where we left off. Okay, looks like we got that done. So we've got iTunes now. Now this little checkbox to open iTunes after the installer exits, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uncheck that only because uh, I want to show you how we install Search and Play and then we'll come back and we'll uh, look at iTunes more when we actually install the Swing Thing library. Okay, I'm going to click Finish. And that basically gives us iTunes. You can see it put a, an icon here on the desktop. Let me just move that down where it's a little bit more visible. All right, now we've got one last installation to do here, uh, which is the Search and Play installer. So again, I'll just double click that.
Now if you uh, tried to install Search and Play uh, before you'd installed uh, iTunes or QuickTime, it will uh, actually uh, not let you complete the installation until you have at least QuickTime installed. And then it uh, would send you to the Apple website so you can do that installation, which is why uh, I did this installation of uh, QuickTime before uh, anything else. Again, uh, this unknown just simply means that uh, Microsoft doesn't know who we are here at Swing Thing because I didn't uh, want to pay them a fee uh, and go through a lot of rigmarole just to get registered with them. So uh, if you really feel uh, insecure when you see uh, something like this and you don't want to deal with it, then don't install uh, our software. But we've been very careful and there's no hacks and it will not harm you or your computer. So I'm just going to go ahead now and quick click the Yes button here. And the uh, Search and Play Install Wizard pops up. Let's click Next. This is the same README file that uh, you saw over on the Mac end. So we'll just click Next. And uh, this wants to install it in your Documents folder, and uh, that's the recommended install location. Again, uh, if you browse to the uh, Program folder and have it installed there, uh, it won't work properly. So make sure that you install it in your Documents directory, which is the default. So we'll just click yeah, uh, Next. And it'll put a shortcut on the desktop. We'll just let it do that. We'll click Next. And finally, we'll just click Install. OK, so uh, now we've got Search and Play installed. We've got all the necessary components now. And uh, we could uh, leave this checked and it would just launch Search and Play, but I'm not going to do that. In fact, you can launch Search and Play on your computer and uh, it will quickly take you to the help area so that you can see that there are some other tutorials there if you want to watch them. Uh, the only one that I strongly recommend uh, that you watch is the Getting Started one, which is about a 15 minute tutorial and uh, that will actually walk you through how you can use the Search and Play application in order to uh, really speed up and uh, make very efficient your, uh, your searches as you're looking for Swing Thing shows that you'd like to listen to. Okay, I'm going to click on Finish. So that's basically uh, everything that needs to be done uh, in, in order to install uh, Search and Play and to get ready. Uh, everything that we needed to do to get ready to install the Swing Thing library into iTunes. So uh, backing up here now, you can see that we also have the uh, folder here, which is the Swing Thing library for iTunes. And uh, it's a very large library. It's about 60 gigabytes. So we're going to look at installing that in the next segment here. Okay. So now we can install the Swing Thing library into iTunes. The first thing that you'll have to do is to make a decision. You're going to have to decide, do I leave the library on the external drive or USB stick that the library came on? Or do we copy the library into your computer's hard drive? And uh, there's two ways to do this. You, in both cases, we're going to import the library into iTunes. In the first case, here on the left, we leave the library on the USB stick or the external drive that it came on and we tell iTunes to use that as the as the uh, storage location for the uh, iTunes library of Swing Thing. Now in order for that to work that means that after you've done that whenever you go into iTunes and you tell it you want to play something uh, you're going to have to have that uh, external device plugged into your computer so that iTunes will be able to actually play the show. If you don't want to leave the USB stick plugged into your computer, 
and would rather just copy everything over onto your hard drive and into iTunes, then you don't need to keep the uh, USB stick plugged in and you can stick it away in a safe place in case something goes wrong sometime in the future and you maybe need to reinstall it, you'll have a backup. If you, on the other hand, looking on the left here, if you if you uh, leave it on the USB stick, you also run the risk that the stick might get damaged. You know, somebody, it might get bumped by somebody while it's plugged into your laptop, for example. And uh, if that happens and the USB stick is broken, then you'd have to come back to us to get a, another copy of the library. So again, that's uh, a disadvantage in most cases. But if you have very limited storage space on your computer, because this is a 60 gigabyte library, then you probably uh, will have to uh, use an external device and have iTunes read it from there. Even if you do that, I would recommend making a backup onto a onto a an extra device somewhere so that you're sure that you have a copy if that external drive or USB stick gets damaged and breaks down and you'll have a, a copy somewhere. So that's just uh, recommended practice if you decide to use the external drive rather than copying it onto your hard drive. So it just here, the external source drive must be attached to play the shows if you leave the library on the external drive. But the external drive is not needed to play the shows if you've actually copied the library into iTunes. So I hope that's as clear as mud. So what we're going to do in this example is we're going to leave it on the external drive. And I will show you the difference uh, in iTunes so that you'll know how you can make the, that decision and either leave it on the external drive or import it into your iTunes library. So let's get started. So here we are back on our PC. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch iTunes. This is the very first time that we've launched it. And so we'll get their uh, user license screen here in a moment. Here it is. So you can read through that if you want and then click on Agree. As with many programs, when you first install it and launch a program for the very first time, it sometimes takes a little bit longer to launch than normal. Uh, so we're waiting here a little bit while this loads. Uh, keep in mind, by the way, that this PC is not really uh, a separate uh, PC box. This is a Mac computer and I'm running PC software on it. So it, it will run a little bit slow. Um, now what you're seeing here is there's a tutorial that comes with iTunes and you can come back to this at any time and they have tutorial movies on all sorts of things. So if you're interested in learning more about iTunes you can uh, explore these movies at your convenience. I'm just going to close that for now and because we don't have anything in our library yet uh, there are some options here. Uh, you can click here and this will find all of the music that's already on your computer and offer to put it into your iTunes library for you. We're not going to do that in this in this case, but you can uh, if you have other things. But I think the first thing we should do, just to keep it simple, is just bring the Swing Thing library in here first. Now, before we do that, I want want to show you that you can go into the uh, preferences here, and I believe that on the PC, I'm being a Mac guy, I'm not real sure where this is. Um, let me just look here real quick. I think, ah, there it is. Okay, under the, uh, <laughs> sorry about that, not being a PC guy. Under the edit menu, we'll go to preferences. And then I want to go straight over to the advanced tab. And uh, right here, there's a checkbox that says copy files to the iTunes media folder when adding to library. So if you want to have the library actually copied over onto your computer's hard drive, then you want to check this box. 
and then when you and then click OK and then when we do the next step of actually bringing in the library it will actually make a copy however if you do not want to have the library brought onto your computer's hard drive would rather keep it on an external drive then make sure that this is unchecked before you bring in the library so we'll just leave it like that and remember that's on the advanced tab in preferences and uh, that's under the edit menu right up here just go there to preferences advanced and make sure that this is unchecked and that way everything will still live on the external drive okay so we're ready to do this now you're going to be surprised at how easy this is all I have to do is grab the folder for the swing thing library for iTunes and drag it right up here and you'll notice how this how you get this blue box up here I'll just let it go and it'll do the rest for you now because we have so many shows here we've got we've got over a thousand shows I think there's a thousand and six altogether and so it still has to look on the external drive and read what's on there and then put references to every one of these shows uh, inside of the uh, iTunes music folder it will not copy over the actual files but it does copy over a reference to them so that it will know how to find them so I'm going to uh, just pause this movie I'll come back when this is finished and then we'll have a look at what we get okay looks like it's done and so you can see we've got all these albums they'll have the same cover that's because I gave them all the same label you know the same picture but each one is an individual show show 571 886 etc and so um, you know it's all in there for you now that's all there is to it the uh, if you wanted to find something you can try a search for example you could try a search for Dorsey and as soon as you do it will try and pull up any of the shows that have Dorsey tracks in them now the sometimes you can't tell by looking at them but uh, you know the name Dorsey will be found in the playlist that was presented with the uh, with the show and uh, so that's why I usually recommend that uh, you use the search and play because you can do much more advanced searches with that so uh, what I would recommend doing is go ahead and launch the search and play app uh, after you've done all this and uh, try and do a search with that and uh, maybe watch the getting started video that comes with it and I think you'll be good to go so uh, thanks again for uh, picking up our swing thing library I'm absolutely delighted that uh, we're getting this out to uh, to the general public trying to make it uh, as close to free as possible Oh, by the way, if you don't know what this sidebar is, don't worry about it. You can just click on Hide Sidebar and it'll go away. Um, but otherwise, you're, uh, you're good to go.